Hi, today I'm, today I'm showing you how to make an N64 style Uzi. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get right into it. Um, first, I start by sketching out the boxes, the shapes, the like minimal things that make up an Uzi. Um, and it might look like I'm just kind of redrawing the above. Um, and I am, but you know, breaking it down to his most primitive shapes, the simplest chunks and pieces that would make that up. Uh, and then I go into the coloring and like, you know, just get a pretty simple texture going. Um, so I get, again, the big shapes, the big pieces, the details that need to be called out for it to like make it that. Putting a little bit of noise um, and just, you know, highlights on the things, get that shiny metal gun look. Getting the divots in the um, magazine or clip or something. Someone's going to correct me. And there we go. Uh, one quick note, everything here is heavily edited. So we start modeling, I, you know, I, I come in with a very simple box and then I cut it into pieces. And most of my construction here for a while is going to be just using boxes. Um, I use several boxes to get the curve of the handle correct. And another box, yep. This one we're going to shake it up as a cylinder, six-sided cylinder. Uh, rotated 45 degrees, just so, you know, it's kind of off axis. Uh, this one I was pretty proud of. It's actually a pentagon, so I still use four sides, but I get the circular shape. Uh, there I am building up the sights, um, and the handle actually took a minute. This one was difficult to get. The sorry, handle, um, the foregrip, I guess. Um, that one took a lot of shaping and sculpting to get the shape right. So this is a trick I like to do. I like to pull it out to the side by like one unit because it's easy to you know snap to grid that way, and then it works out. Here I use a circle uh, to construct the back sights. Um, just because it has that nice regular formation already. And there's the model. Alright, so I want to call out the places where I'm going to use similar texturing. So here is going to be this like checkerboard pattern, um, you know, that kind of like textured pattern. Um, this is going to be this shiny, shiny black. Uh, maybe we'll go ahead and use it on the foregrip too to see how that works out. Um, and then here, you know, we'll have the, the two lines. Those are pretty symbolic. Uh, maybe some bolts, some some pieces. And we're going to start with a simple gradient. Um, part of the style here is you have tiny, tiny texture space. So setting aside simple gradients and things like that allows you to reuse it universally. So you'll, you'll see some very generic type of textures that get reused over and over in this in this model. Uh, here I do it just a very simple checkerboard pattern, uh, and what's cool is since I know it's going to be an N64 style thing, I, um, you know, can can assume that it's going to be uh, interpolated with uh, blending. Uh, thus, I get kind of a weird pattern out of it, which is cool. Um, here I am just you know placing. So I I have a one unit fade texture there in the middle in the bottom left, middle left. And I'm just using it to kind of fill out all the details. Uh, and the edges are all highlit, which makes it really nice and reusable. Here I am texturing the back of the, I think it's the uh, stock holder, the, the stock, the thing that the stock attaches to. Uh, this one doesn't have a stock, but you know, I still felt like including that detail. I really like this piece. Um, this is a little really clever reuse of existing textures to get a little bit of a shine. Here I am going for one of the higher detail pieces, which is you know, doing the bolts on the uh, magazine and then, you know, adding a little div a little piece on the bottom and then adding a shadow, which was a nice little touch, I like that, uh, on the top. And this, you know, I was able to reuse uh, both for the front and back of the magazine and I was actually able to reuse the bolt here in a minute, which was super cool, um, on the top piece. Yep, there you go. On the top piece there. Here's the front of the gun, uh, the the muzzle, I suppose, and it is probably the highest detail piece in the entire gun be, for how small it is. Uh, now we're going to start texturing the top. Basically, I make sure to get everything aligned, and I make sure that I know where everything is relative to the texture space. Um, this is really important so that when I draw in the details here, uh, they line up nicely with with the uh, existing geometry. Uh, that you know doesn't necessarily have to match so you know i draw in the little piece of greebly there and then i think this is the bolt slide or, or slide or something like that i don't i'm not super good at gun words um 
And yeah, so basically we have that those things line up. Uh, next we're going to start texturing this, so finish off with texturing the sides. Uh, you know, get those two lines, those iconic two lines, and then, you know, put a bit of noise and then that third smaller one to the right. Uh, this one I ended up drawing one good line, one good piece, and then duplicated it and then adding noise just to get it to, you know, be a little bit different. Uh, from there I do a little bit of weathering on the sides and then we go into full screen stuff. So one of the things I like to do is do a noise, like full color noise, blend it down. That gives it that like weird, um, weird N64 compressed look. And then here I am playing with just the uh, temperature, the colors. I really liked this blue steel kind of look. And there we are. And uh, this took me about an hour and a half to do. Uh, this is super sped up, so don't think this is how good I am. But hopefully this has been informative for you guys.